Hey guys, V Betty with another V plays, and we're back to the best of, and I'm air quoting here because for my best of series, I'm kind of sticking to easiest to fly. And while I do have the P1102 Bravo up here, which I do think is a heck of a lot of fun to fly, I think all of the German ground attackers, especially starting at about tier 7 with the 265, and then working its way down to the tier 10, are an interesting line to get into. A little bit more counter other ground attackers, like they kind of clear out the zone so they got some breathing room, and then they finish off targets. Once you get to tier 9 and tier 10, your bomb capacity doubles, and you're getting a set of very strong forward firing cannons, a set of 430s in this case, and they pump out a lot of damage. And I don't want to undersell the 1102 because it isn't really my pick as the best tier 10 ground attacker, but as you'll see here, the cumulative forward firing damage is pretty staggering at nearly 1500 when I'm running my gas operated action. That means that this thing's kicking out a ton of firepower and even some glancing blows are going to do some heavy damage. On top of that, the airspeed is really good. For a ground attacker, being able to kick it up to nearly 500 miles an hour is going to make it very easy to get around the battlefield. And it is an interesting looking plane, especially since it has these kind of little balancing wheels that come off the wingtips here it reminds me of a b-52 or even the u-2 spy plane except those ones actually need to be attached by some follow-on cars after the fact but these i don't know if they call it tricycle it's not really even tricycle i, I it's more like trapeze landing gear i think it might be called but very interesting aircraft there's even a jet engine in the tail what a weird concept anyways but Without any further ado, the real pick for me is going to be the IL-40P. And the reason I say the IL-40P is going to be the easier of these to fly, it's because it's more of the same. I mean, with the exception of losing the big hard-hitting cannons that you kind of got with the IL-8 and the IL-20, the IL-40 and the IL-40P switch over to 23 millimeter cannons as the forward firing armament, but this aircraft relies a lot more on the ordnance. All of the Illusion series does. So you're always gonna have a combination of rockets and bombs, and at this tier, you're getting the same very capable munitions that you were getting with the IL-40, and they're even more potent. On top of that, you got some more hit points. The cannons are a little bit different, but they're still able to pump out a bit of damage. And you have a very solid 23 millimeter tail gunner with a very wide firing arc. In fact, I think it's under upgrades here. We can see the firing arc of this thing is gonna be negative 40 gun depression, positive 50 elevation, uh, field of fire 40 in either direction here. And by having a ball turret in the back, which again, the IL-40 gets this as well, uh, it really does change things when you come off of the IL-20 and previous where people could kind of slip underneath your aircraft to avoid that tail gunner fire. Now you can continue that hail of gunfire for anybody who is uh, willing to endure your tail gunner fires. So anyways, without any further ado, we're going to take this thing out and we're going to check out just how powerful these rockets and bomb combination can be. All right, so this is a little bit fitting. We're actually going up against the German ground attacker. Granted, it is a tier nine, but he is going to be specialized and accompanied by a specialized XF-85. So we do have the P-1092 on our team, so that'll work out well. And we have two mining facilities, which ground attackers, especially your straight up attack aircraft like this plane are really gonna like mines because mines don't have any high altitude fire or sorry low altitude firing weapons they're all going to be high altitude heavy artillery represented by a doghouse opposed to a triangle so we're gonna go ahead and hammer the boost and while we don't necessarily have the same speed characteristics as the 1102 the il-40 is going to be able to get to where it needs to go anyways so we're actually going to start slamming on the brakes as well as manual flaps, which if you guys watch my beginner's guide, you'll see how I configure myself to be able to uh, take advantage of... Oh, there we go. Good rocket hits. Do one more for good measure. 
Probably a bit of overkill there. Spread these out just a little bit. And we're actually going to drop both bombs here because this should be more than enough to take it. And we can just go ahead and start the reload cycle on this thing. So we had more than enough munitions to be able to take that zone. And now we're going to work our way over to the next site. The other nice thing about this aircraft is that the 23mm cannons are a little bit more wieldy than the 57s that you had on like the IL-20. I know I say that when I took an IL-20 out and I was derp shotting a lot of aircraft with single pass runs, but again I state that that is a few and far between and the exception not the rule. The other nice thing about using these 23s is that the 23 sustained fire allows you to be able to get some more damage out in the sense of uh, being able to start fires because if there's a chance of fire from a gun, oh boy, and you're having continuous fire, the odds of uh, getting that to proc is going to be a lot higher. All right, let's try and make things easier for anybody else that comes through here. Took out some of that defense gun. Whoa, getting squirrely here, V. We're heading to their mine. We're just doing some damage on our way through. We'll turn the flaps off. We'll hit the tail gunner, center him in the sight here, and that guy's gone anyways. And you can see the damage we were pumping out with the tail gunner. And of course, the bombs and rockets will be up momentarily. And we're going to see if we can do a single pass run on this site. Get a little bit of altitude so we can tip that nose down and go into the dive attack. We're going to start hitting these light buildings with the guns. Oh, there we go. Closer target. Uh, I'm going to launch two rockets over here while we're continuing to burst fire. That was enough to be able to take out that section. And then maybe this will be enough splash damage. Yep. And now we're going to fire all four here. And we're going to drop both bombs again because this should be more than enough to take it. Get a little bit of clearance so don't get hurt by your own splash damage. And is this really going to be what I think it is? Oh, no. I thought it was the human in the XF-85. But like I said, 23s are a lot easier to handle. And we were able to take out that light fighter as he went past us. Sometimes one of your best defenses in a ground attack aircraft is just to slam on the brakes because most things aren't going to be able to outslow you, which is an interesting tactic that most of us probably don't think of initially, but being able to go slower than the enemy is able to fly allows that you to be able to let them just blow past you, and the time that they are behind you, your tail gunner is laying into them. We may be hanging out here for a hot minute. Oh, what do we got here? I see a multi-roll coming in. Again, we're going to try and outslow this guy maybe a little bit. Is he blowing past us? I see you, Hunter, with your big 30 millimeter cannons. Ah, uh, we lost our engine, though. Got him. Hop into the tail gunner here. Get some damage out. The damage will act as a defensive measure. Did he just blow past us? I think he did. Get back in the tail gunner, though. Pitch that nose up. I have manual uh, pitch on my controls. And we just got air supremacy. Okay. Air superiority, rather. Okay, we didn't need to kill that guy. Whoa, my seat just dropped me. Hold on. Apparently my kids were playing with my adjustment handles. There we go. We know somebody's over at the mine. We'll see what we can do to get over there. Dropping the nose, hitting the boost a little bit. Oh, they're going after both simultaneously. Okay, so I'm actually heading to the wrong site. I see both ground attackers over there as well as a light, which indicates to me that that's probably where, yep, that's where the XF-85 is. But the match is over, we just hit 10,000 personal points, and like I've said before, that's kind of my mark of success. Uh, nobody really talked too much in that match, it's just me saluting and then saying good game at the end there. So, a relatively quick battle, but much like in Bombers, if you're playing the aircraft right when it comes to these, these sight capture aircraft, like ground attackers, uh, bombers, then... 
usually if you're doing your job correctly or very efficiently, then the match is going to end fairly quickly as well. Uh, just wanted to touch on cruise skills real quick as well. When it comes to cruise skills, it's going to be paramount for a ground attacker. Anything that's going to be using munitions as one of its primary methods of getting points. Demolition expert. It's always a good bet to go with demolition expert. I've, I've, it's going to be your best bet. Uh, after that, uh, I like going with protection expert, especially for the attack aircraft, because they're going to be chewing up a lot of fire from the low altitude gun sites. Uh, and eventually it will, you will get a tritted away. It's just a matter of time. Uh, and then I do like engine guru because I want to be able to get across the battlefield a little bit more quickly. Although I would see a good argument for battle tested. There's been times when my tail has been shot out and you've just kind of slowly drifted towards the ground because it was really hard for you to be able to pitch up. I do favor this setup using cruise flight as well because it allows me to be able to get between zones that much faster. Uh, but usually that's best on bombers. I just really want to get to where I'm going. And I've said this a million times. I've kind of changed my, my position on this. I think Precision Gunner, based on some discussions in my comments and other videos, when you get crit damage on a bot that's attacking you or a, a computer-controlled aircraft, whether it's a defense fighter or just an enemy player on the red team, they typically break off when they start getting critical damage to their aircraft. And if you can take out a pilot... You've essentially muted most of the damage coming to your aircraft from that platform. So I go with Precision Gunner, then I go Quick Reflexes. But if you eventually get the points to be able to throw on Defensive Fire, Defensive Fire also will reduce the incoming damage if you're unlucky enough not to get those crits that you were requiring earlier. And you saw some of the damage we were able to kick out with the Tail Gunner. We did kill three aerial targets, a defense aircraft, we also killed a fighter and a multi-roll, and we did both of those with forward-firing guns. And we also got some of those good crits like we talked about before. All in all, we actually did 1,100 damage to enemy aircraft, which is pretty good considering this is a ground attack platform. But when it comes to ground targets, even though it was a quick battle, we got 400 capture points received. We were able to take out... The two special ground sites, uh, as well as at least four, I think it was three large ground targets, and then a couple of medium ground targets as well, uh, for a total of seven taken out right here, and a lot of ground damage just in a very short period of time. Uh, but you'll see in a longer battle, you guys are easily going to get up to very high numbers, especially when you're talking about tier 10s, just because of the volume of fire that these things kick out, so... Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this. I'm sure there'll be some people who really like the 1102 Bravo. Hey, I like it too. I just think that for somebody who is starting out in the game, that the Aleutian series and the Tier 10 especially is going to be a really easy transition through that entire line, while the Germans take a lot more skill to fly them properly right off the bat. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it watching this and uh, you got some good insight anyways i'll catch you guys on the next one